Okay, so I'm gonna try and keep this uh, pretty quick because all we're gonna talk about is initiation. So we're just looking at the initiation part of DNA replication in bacteria. So this is gonna be different than the initiation of uh, protein synthesis with like initiation complex and things like that. That's a different process. So make sure you're very clear on initiation of what particular process you're, you're focused on. So DNA replication in general, in broad terms, and eukaryotes and prokaryotes is very similar in the way in which it happens. But this initiation part is unique for bacteria. And so I'm just going to go over the names of some of the main proteins, not really everything and not all the detail, just an overview of the process with the name of the few of the molecules that are involved and, and a general explanation of how it works. So replication begins at an area of the DNA. So again, a, a bacterial genome is circular. So we have a single chromosome and it's a circular chromosome and we have our OEC located in just typically one particular area. Some species may have more than one origin, but we're going to use this as a model. If there's one particular origin of replication, say in this particular model. Right. So the OEC is a region of the DNA. Uh, typically rich in adenines and thymines. Now we have a molecule called DNAA. So this is not DNA. This is a protein. Okay, so it's a protein called DNAA. It's a DNA binding protein. And DNA A will bind to the DNA at the region of OEC. Now, what has to happen is the assembly of numerous DNA A proteins, so a large number of them. And DNA A can be present in an active or inactive form. So essentially, it's activated once it has ATP attached. So DNA A ATP is an active form. And what will happen is you'll have numerous DNA A molecules, DNA A ATP molecules binding to OREC. Another protein called DIAA. Another DNA binding protein will join together DNA A molecules in a way that starts to form our um, replosome. So the replosome structure is going to be the structure composed of numerous different proteins that begins and carries out the process of DNA replication. And so before it can begin, you have a couple problems, right? So the DNA is two strands, and the two strands are held together with hydrogen bonds. In addition to that, the strands are in a helical formation, so they're coiled around one another. So what you have to do is pull apart the two strands and then uncoil the strands. And so that doesn't happen everywhere. It starts at one particular place. It starts at the origin of replication. It starts with DNA A binding there, DIAA, then assembling them into a larger unit. Okay. And then we have a protein called IHF, which will come in here. And IHF is a bending protein. So what IHF is going to do is then bend the DNA to help kind of break it apart and open up the two strands. Okay, so the, the strands get opened up and 
And then we have to have, and then we could really kind of get started here. So then uh, single strand binding proteins would come in. So those are single strand binding proteins. Kind of temporarily keep the pieces of DNA apart. And then the DNA helicase can come in. And helicase will then move to continue to break the bonds between the strands. And then after that, all the other components will come in. The primase, the topoisomerase, will be working separate from that. And then eventually the DNA polymerase that actually starts to read the strands and make the new strands. That's all separate part of the DNA replication process. So as you study DNA replication, that's where all those will come in. This is the beginning of that process. So before all that begins, before we get the primase and the DNA polymerase working and all those other things, we have to initiate the process. And so the key molecules to take away here are uh, the DNAA, the DIAA, and the IHF in particular. Okay, So proteins that bind to the DNA to recognize the origin and help assemble the structure that's going to then pull apart the DNA and separate it and break the strands and then keep it apart and then we can con continue the process, the helicase will continue the process from that region as it moves throughout the whole structure. We'll keep kind of pulling the DNA apart as it moves. So that's just a short little introduction, just uh, covering those specific aspects of it. Um, and that's all you would really need to know in, in our particular class because it's still a lower level class.